So hi everyone, my name is Robert Kujarski. I'm from AGH Solar Boat, from the AGH University in Krakow. And I'll present to you our idea for an IoT-enabled telemetry system for naval, naval vessels. So quickly going over what I'm about to cover here is, uh, yeah, I want to introduce AGH Solar Boat to you a little bit. Then I'll go on to explaining the current solution we have for telemetry on our one of our boats, Selka, and then some experiments we did with IoT technologies, uh, so lightweight machine to machine, which was covered previously in the previous talk. Uh, that's for Barca, the other boat, and uh, yeah, and our plans for the future for a more universal generali generalized system for both our vessels and what we were expecting to get from building such a system. Okay, so introducing AGS Solar Boat. We're a student scientific science club. Uh, yeah, and uh, our main goal is to build such beautiful boats as you can see on, the, on these pictures. Uh, the red one is called Celca. It's the second iteration of our solar boat, uh, which is, uh, yeah, it's it's a racing boat, and we're we're trying to uh, race it around different competitions around Europe, and it uses some clever technology such as uh, those hy hydrofoils, which you, which as you can see, allow it to decrease drag very uh, dramatically when when traveling, and then also. Some three years ago, we started building autonomous boats, and this is the second iteration of our autonomous boat, Barca. Uh, and it also starts in different competitions. Um, we've been to Florida, USA twice already, to the RoboBoat competition, and we've made some big progress with this second iteration there. Um, okay, so moving on. The current solution for telemetry, which is quite important for us, uh, for the strategy planning for those uh, challenges, for those races, uh, for the boat Selka, uh, looks somewhat like this. So we have an embedded system that controls different actuators, con collects data from different sensors around the boat, and then we trans transmit it via just a simple radio module that works on a license-free a spectrum and yeah to a base station that's located uh, somewhere on the shore and then if we have internet access access to the cloud then we can uh, transmit that data further to a time series database because that's what we're using influxdb to be exact uh, but we also have a local instance in case we don't have internet access and yeah this works great uh, except for a couple of reasons, I mean, a couple of uh, issues that we've been encountering lately, such as reliability and range issues. Uh, well, most notably, we didn't get much data last time we were in Monaco, which is like the biggest competition of the year. And that's because the range was very poor back there. And we had to do a lot of tweaking with the antennas uh, on the boat and on the receiving station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it just never it never just works. So we it's it's very inconvenient uh, as a solution for something that should be available all the time and something that we can depend on to plan our race. And yeah, the next case. So for the boat Barca, we we yeah implemented a little experiment with this uh, using actually the NJ product from AV system. And uh, it worked some, something like this. This is a bit different of a setup. So Barca uses Wi-Fi to connect to the base station on land because the distances aren't that far. Uh, so we can go get away with that. But then, uh, yeah, and also if the base station on, on the Wi-Fi on uh, shore is connected to the internet, we can go straight to, to the cloud uh, server, which in this case is Coyote. Mm. Yeah, and that allows us to also collect data, but also uh, manage different devices uh, located on the boat. And we just did it to test out the solution. It worked fine. It was uh, a really easy integration. Uh, so we want to also stick with that in the future. Yeah, 
as I said, the integration was pretty easy. We just had to fit it into somehow uh, into the system um, on an embedded Linux platform. So that works really well, actually, with NJ. And uh, yeah, I highly support it, uh, this product. I like it. So go check it out. Um, yeah, and this is our idea for the solution for both our cases. So we still have the same sort of clouds. We have the databases there. We have our, uh, yeah, because it's connected to the internet and because we will have like internet access basically everywhere with this solution, which I will explain in a second, we can access our different, uh, yeah, different um, services such as MS Teams where we have some documentations like GitLab in case we want to check something really quickly on, my, on maybe or maybe push out like a new iteration uh, if you want to fix something uh, in the software. And yeah, in the case of Celka, we'll pl we'll, we're planning to deploy like a mobile network. Mm, yeah, just a just a regular modem for three and four G networks. Maybe not 2G because the throughput is probably too low for that, but I included it just because the hardware supports it, the hardware that we have. And uh, yeah, for Barca, the case is, it, yeah, it may look a bit complicated here, but the idea here is that we will have just a stationary router that gives us a uh, yeah, connection both to the internet via mobile network, and then we have a local wireless Wi-Fi network, which Barca already can connect to, so there is no change in the hardware there. But it also gives us the benefit that we can deploy this on whatever competition, wherever in the world. And as long as we have access to the mobile network, we can have uh, internet on everyone's phone or laptop, so we can actually access those other services and have it all uh, yeah, accessible re really simply. And this is especially important for places like Monaco and um, and the US, where the internet, the mobile internet, is very expensive. So, and usually the places where the, those competitions take place, the Wi-Fi networks there are very very oversaturated because there's just too many devices trying to connect. Mm, so, if we have this sort of solution, we can have just one SIM card, which is like a higher. Uh, data plan, which usually is more cost effective, and still have internet uh, that's a bit better than everyone else's. So I think that's the way we're going to move forward. And now, as for the implementation, firstly, this is the tech stack that we want to support. So a combination of MQTT and lightweight machine to machine. This is good because it gives us device management out of the box. So if you ever want to do something like that, which we probably probably will, because uh, we're also planning to expand this like to um, different devices that are in our workshops, in our work areas, such as like a composite heater, which uh, then we can monitor remotely, even turn it off in case uh, of some emergency. So that's really convenient. Uh, yeah, and then all of all of these different features. Uh, are really, really important to us, especially the ease of extendability in MQTT because because the protocol is built the way it is built. So we can just uh, add some new device, register some new device to our uh, network just by adding a new topic and sending data. The broker will handle that no problem. And with the combination of, of InfluxDB, we also don't have to do anything crazy in the database because it accepts whatever it sends. Uh, so this is really, really easy to, to extend and we really like the InfluxDB interface, which gives us nice visualization. We can build uh, dashboards and uh, that will give us, I think, an edge in terms of the strategy planning uh, during races, etc. So I think this is the right way to go. And then, uh, of course, the integration with Coyote for lightweight machine to machine because it's plug and play. Right, and that's how I'm expecting this will turn out in the end. So the plan is to have a self-hosted MQTT plus InfluxDB combination and then use the cloud version of Coyote. I'm not sure if if there is a, 
an option to have it self-hosted, but I know there's a cloud version that like everyone can access, uh, like a test or something version. Yeah, we're not going to be like utilizing it uh, as you would in a big company or anything. So maybe <laughs> that works for us. I don't know. And then, yeah, the combination of those features is really what we're looking for. We can cover everything we're doing with that. Mm. And yeah, maybe explaining a bit about the diagram here. So as you can notice, the hardware on the autonomous boat, the Bar Barca, it doesn't change at all, actually. This is the same setup we have right now. So we have a Wi-Fi modem that connects to some router that's that has access to the uh, internet. And then we can, uh, yeah, we can just stream the data to, to different databases in the cloud. Shouldn't be a problem. So um, because of the different visualization features and uh, Etc. In for in InfluxDB, we also want to send some MQTT traffic and have the have this data duplicated on both sides. Uh, Coyote is still important because it gives us device management as lighted machine to machine uh, does. It's just built in, so um, yeah, we're gonna take advantage of that. And for Telka, uh, the only change there really is. Uh, is that we're getting rid of the middle step, the base station that's on land, because we're going to have a multi-standard uh, mobile modem on board, which will connect directly to the mobile networks that are around us and give us internet access. So we can send the data directly to database and just receive it. Uh, I mean, look it up from uh, where we're standing on shore and plan the race from there. Yeah. And the goal in implementing all of this is really just to have a system that will just work. Because as we know, mobile networks, well, maybe in some cases are not applicable. I think this is the right way to go because they are reliable enough that we don't have to think about it too much and it just works. So we can focus on real engineering and not uh, tweaking the antennas, which is not that interesting when building boats that can fly above water. Um, so <laughs> that's what we're going uh, for. And then, uh, yeah, ease of extending the new devices, because this is our base case. We, we need to support this. And then we might also want to add different uh, devices, such as the composite heater I mentioned. And of course, because we're on, in a university, uh, we're trying to learn. That's why the technology stack is so uh, why? That's what why we're using uh, all of this stuff. And that's why we're self-hosting all of this. Uh, partly because we don't have the funding <laughs> that we'd like, but m but also to learn some things uh, along the way. And yeah, mm, that's that's it. If you're interested in learning more about our little science club, then uh, go to any of those links or contact us. There's the email address. And thank you. If you have any suggestions, maybe for us, or many, or any questions, go ahead. I'm glad to answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So the question is, how many IoT nodes are on those boats? Uh, well, in case of Telka, maybe let's go here real quick. Uh, we're treating the entire embedded system, which is basically a network of CAN nodes. So we have the CAN bus in between them. And then we'll just have one like exit node, I guess, from that network to the general IoT. But uh, depending on how we go about it, we might want to sp split it up so that the data collected on some of those CAN nodes is uh, sent as like coming from the that exact board, then uh, I think it's five like physical uh, devices, physical processors mm, or six. And uh, yeah, if we just say that it's all coming from one board, we can treat it as one. Uh, I don't think it matters to us that much. So. It's either one of or five, depending on how you look at it. OK. 
Okay, so the question is about the range of this uh, 868 megahertz module, and is that a problem, right? Okay, so the range is supposedly up to a couple kilometers, but we've never been able to do that, as, as you probably uh, guessed. So the, the real range we got on, on Monaco last year, uh, or this year, <clears throat> I think the the link was was starting to break at around 150 meters, and I have no idea why, because the device looked uh, configured, it looked like it was configured correctly and everything. It was like automated a bit um, because the manufacturers of this module have this really nice syncing software. So you just configure one of those, and the other one will pair this configuration. So it was supposed to work uh, like for really ro long ranges. I think we had the antennas mm, set up also correctly, but it just didn't happen. So it's for us, it's 150 meters or so. And yeah, that was a problem because even in, in the challenges that were closest to shore, we just had uh, the connection for like maybe one tenth of the lap. And we won't really want to monitor it all the time, especially when like we get bad weather and the boat isn't recharging that much via so solar panels. So we have to monitor the battery very precisely to, to get the most out of it. So yeah, that's, that's sort of failed on us. But then we also get uh, races in, for example, Netherlands, where the furthest distance from where we are, where we're starting the race is like 30 kilometers. So yeah, that won't work at all. But I think they have good enough coverage that the mobile network solution will work. So, yeah, so the question is, how much do we care about latency yeah. in getting this data? Okay, uh, not that much because we're not doing any computation and any control over it. We're just looking at the trends of, of this data and then, <clears throat> and based on that, we're trying to figure out the best way to steer the boat to, to get the uh, best time at the end of a race. And that's, yeah, that's only for endurance races. So those races are typically around three, four, maybe five hours at most. And <clears throat> we're just trying to monitor it, uh, just the trend of how the battery voltage is changing, how much charge are we getting in different parts of the course, etc. So the latency isn't crucial. It would be terrible if it were like a couple of minutes, but that never happens. So. Yeah, it, it's, I, I guess every, anything's good enough for us, as long as the data gets there. And, you know, with this, it just won't. So that's, that's a no-go. Okay. I don't see any more questions, so thanks.